Before we get to our next storyteller, I just want to let Anna know that she is coming up next. All right, I think it's time. I think it's time. Our next storyteller. In a two, in a, in 2009, a devastating tsunami hit the Samoan Islands. Within 24 hours, Veronica and her team of first responders had been alerted and began making the two-day trip to the islands via military flights. Things did not go according to plan. Please put your hands together for Veronica. I was so scared when the tsunami warning came. There was a bell in each village made from a retired diving tank with the bottom cut off, hung from its nozzle. They were used for celebrations, meetings, and emergencies. It had been eight days since the devastating earthquake that caused a tsunami in Samoa. I was stationed in American Samoa as a first responder. Now the American Red Cross mandates that first responders only be in a disaster area for 21 days, three weeks. This seems to be the threshold that protects mental health. Specifically, post-traumatic stress disorder. I was on a reconnaissance mission in a coastal village when the bells began to ring. Samoa is an island chain made from a hotspot volcano, just like Hawaii. It's mountainous. The only place for villages is along the coast. Now, I'm not used to natural disasters that take place on 80 degrees, sunny days with palms swaying and the ocean sparkling. I'm from Michigan. We have tornadoes. The, sh the weather goes to shit long before a disaster happens. But the bells began to ring up and down the coast, emergency in surround sound. I'm sitting with a family taking their narrative about the tsunami and it's happening to them all over again. And to me too. There's been an aftershock. It's common to earthquakes. Scientists will measure where on the fault line it took place and how strong it was in order to determine whether or not it might cause a tsunami. The bells were ringing. We had to run. We had to get up the mountain. Now when a stranger tells you it's time to run, they become your family. It's no longer us and them, rescuer and rescuee. We are in it together. And they know all too well how to save your life because they just did the same thing last week. Once we were all secure on the mountain, our supervisor for the mission found us. This was 2009, and our flip phones didn't work on the island. She had a radio and could communicate with base camp, and they determined that the earthquake had taken place far enough away from the island that they had time to move us. We became us and them again. We were property of the United States government, and that made us different. While waiting on the coastal road for the buses that we had commandeered for the mission, I couldn't take my eyes off the water, waiting for it to recede, the telltale sign that a tidal wave is coming. But it didn't. You see, a tsunami warning is just like a tornado warning. Conditions are perfect, a funnel cloud might even be forming, but it might not actually touch down. An hour after the bells had rung, we were given the all clear. Go back to base camp, rest, no more work for today. The entire bus ride back, I couldn't take my eyes off the water, just in case. Three weeks later, my fellow first responders were sent home in order to avoid the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. Not me. I was a field team leader for the National Civilian Community Corps, and this was my first mission in a year of service. 
I flew back to base camp in California to receive my next mission, Katrina relief. My brain didn't get a break. And a year later, I no longer recognized myself. <laughs>